I'm Guy McPherson of GuyMcPherson.com. The information I'm presenting in this short video can be found on the home page of GuyMcPherson.com under the tab Relevant Points for Interviewers. I rely heavily, as always, upon the peer-reviewed literature and major syntheses of the literature. For example, by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The ongoing mass extinction event has been underway for more than 10 years. The United Nations Environment Program reported in August of 2010 that we were driving an estimated 150 to 200 species to extinction every day. This is at least the eighth mass extinction event on Earth within the last two billion years. The projected rate of environmental change, based on the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's extreme conservatism, is reportedly 10,000 times faster than vertebrates can adapt. This according to a peer-reviewed paper by Quintero and Weens published in Ecology Letters on June 26, 2013. Mammals cannot keep up either, as reported in a paper by Davis and colleagues published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences on October 30th, 2018. Burke and colleagues reported in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences on December 26th, 2018 that the best analog for the future is the Pliocene. This paper uses the IPCC's representative concentration pathways in concluding that we are headed for the mid-Pliocene as early as 2030. The representative concentration pathways ignore dozens of self-reinforcing feedback loops and the aerosol masking effect. The mid-Pliocene was at least 2 degrees C warmer than today. This stunningly rapid rate of environmental change indicates vertebrate mammals will not survive. Indeed, biologists Strona and Bradshaw found that a 5 to 6 C global average rise in temperature would cause the extinction of all life on Earth. The paper was published November 13, 2018 in Scientific Reports and was titled Co-extinctions annihilate planetary life during extreme environmental change. This paper includes the following information, quote, In a simplified view, the idea of co-extinction reduces to the obvious conclusion that a consumer cannot survive without its resources. The removal of resources could result in the cascading, bottom-up extinction of several higher-level consumers, end quote. There are additional means by which we could lose all life on Earth, Extrapolating from a paper by Mosu and Mahler published in the May 8, 2020 issue of Frontiers in Plant Science, the uncontrolled meltdown of the world's nuclear power plants is likely to cause the death of all plants. Because plants serve as the base of the food web, species that rely upon those plants, which is essentially all other species, will go extinct in the wake of the meltdown of nuclear power plants. Another means by which we are triggering loss of all life on Earth is commercial air travel. Quote, because this traffic is highly concentrated along the most frequently traveled routes, the vortices aircraft create have transformed into semi-permanent atmospheric circulation, which have widespread effects on how the atmosphere traps and releases heat. It is also possible that these changes alter the loss of water from the atmosphere. This would endanger all life on Earth not just the human population, end quote. So wrote Shao and Polly in their paper, Jet Wash Induced Vortices and Climate Change, which was published in Earth and Space Sciences Open Archive on August 3rd, 2020. Earth is already losing habitat for human animals around the planet. A paper by Colin Raymond and colleagues published in Scientific Advances on May 8th, 2020, concludes Earth has surpassed lethal wet bulb temperatures in tropical and subtropical areas around the globe. The paper is titled, The Emergence of Heat and Humidity Too Severe for Human Tolerance. A paper in the April 8, 2020 issue of Nature projects that the collapse of ocean ecosystems will begin during the decade of the 2020s. That's this decade. The paper uses the IPCC's conservative representative concentration pathways in concluding that, quote, Future disruption of ecological assemblages as a result of climate change will be abrupt because within any given ecological assemblage, the exposure of most species to climate conditions beyond their realized niche limits occurs almost simultaneously. End quote. Maslowski and colleagues incorrectly projected an ice-free Arctic in 2016 plus or minus three years 
in their paper published in the 2012 issue of Annual Review of Earth and Planetary Sciences. The rate of environmental change resulting from such an event likely would lead to the loss of all life on Earth. Again, I point to the rapidity of change as a very important factor frequently overlooked or ignored by climate scientists who are not well versed in biology or ecology. In short, the ongoing rate of environmental change is proving too rapid for vertebrates and mammals to adapt, and it is underlined by a high level of industrial activity. Yet a reduction in industrial activity also drives up the global average temperature as a result of loss of aeroskull masking. In short, the rate of environmental change is proving too rapid for vertebrates and mammals to adapt, and it is underlain by a high level of industrial activity. Yet a reduction in industrial activity also drives up the global average temperature as a result of loss of aerosol masking, a topic about which I have spoken and written often at GuyMcPherson.com. Ongoing climate change is abrupt. Ongoing climate change is irreversible, even according to the conservative Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. We are in the midst of abrupt, irreversible climate change.